welcome to Veritas. If you're able, will you stand with us? Whether you're here for the first time or you've been coming for a while, we're really glad that you guys are here. Um, as a group, we love to start out our nights by reading from the Bible, from God's Word. So let's do that tonight by reading from the book of Psalms. It says, How sweet your word is to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. Instruction from your lips is more precious to me than gold or silver. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding that I might lean, learn your commands. See, as followers of Jesus, we believe that the Bible is God's true word to us. Of course, it is laws and rules and guidelines for living, but more importantly, it is the story of God's love and faithfulness to his people for thousands of years, including us in this room tonight. See, it's the story of his promises being fulfilled. And that's why we pray and teach and listen to and learn and sing God's word. So let's remember that story as we sing with Faron. through the ages yeah. God of Abraham you're the God of covenant and faithful promises time and time again you have proven you do what you just said Though the storm may come and the stand may blow, I will say, stay fast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. Sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. remain the same your history can prove there's nothing you can do you're faithful and true though the storm may come and the winds may blow I remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to
cast your cares on his shoulders oh cast your cares on his love in my weakness in my trouble he won't let go if I lose my way, Lord, I pray, lead me home. When it's darkness, when it's hardest, you are my hope. In my highs and lows, oh, cast your cares on this shoulders. I cast my cares. Lonely, console me, ignite my faith in these broken days. Fix my ways with your grace. When I'm searching, when I'm hurting, you're my hiding place. I trust in your ways. Oh, cause your care. Yes, I cast my cares, Lord. On his show. Only on his shoulders. Cast your cares. Only on his love. On his love. The storm might come, but you never leave. Take his word, he forever be. Source of strength from the running out of energy. Place your cares on the shoulder, the remedy. He gave you strength that is needed for every task. I know he's on our side and that's everything. In the past, he has led us even to the dark. And anything you need, you can ask. Cause I know, Cause I know that you're with me. You're with me. You're near me. You're near me. You're for me. You're for me. I know that you're listening. You're listening. And leading. You're leading. And loving. And loving. I pray that you're near me and free me and care me. I know that. And true worship is a whole life lived for God. We often think that worship is what we're doing right now, singing together. And of course, that's one part of worship, but worship is more than just singing. It's embracing the story that God is telling in the Bible as the one that we are living in and living according to his word. And yet, we often fail to live according to God's word. Let's take some time, um, just on our own, to confess the ways that we have gone against God's word. How have we failed to love others? How have we lived in selfishness and in pride? How have we treated others or ourselves as if we aren't made in the image of God? 
Let's pray on our own now. Because of the forgiveness that Jesus offers, we can read this together. 
Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Thank you, thank you, brother. My man. It's all you. <laughs> I'm probably the most high maintenance dude they've ever had speak up here, man. I got to have a table. I tried to get them to let me do it down there. 
they would have had to rewire all the cameras and everything, and it just wasn't going to work. So anyway, know how happy, excited I am to be here with you guys again tonight. Um, and the biggest reason why is because, you know, there, there were things, there are things I wish I had known as a young man. There are things I wish I had known about this spiritual life when I was your age. Um, things that would have made a difference in the quality of my life. And, you know, I haven't had a bad life. I'm not saying that by any stretch. But little things make all the difference, man. And uh, just like most college students, I was ma mainly living by how I felt in any given moment. I wanted to fit in with my teammates. I wanted to be liked like most people. And so, you know, I made decisions and did things that if I could go back and do it again with what I know now, I guess we all could say that, right? I guess we could all say that. But the, the Old Testament, well, let me tell you about, like, tell it to you like this. One of the things I regret is I cared too much about what people thought, about how I looked. And so I played sports from the time I started until after I graduated with college, from college, fearful. So full of fear, man, that I couldn't play free. I was still good, but I wouldn't take chances. I wouldn't take chances. You know, I, I, I had all the bravado of a college athlete, but on the inside, my heart was small. My heart was fearful because of things that I didn't know. The Old Testament prophet Hosea said this. He said, my people perish from a lack of knowledge. What knowledge is he talking about? Mainly the knowledge of God and knowledge of how he feels about you and me. What he really thinks about us. Dreams relationships, potential, all of it dies when we don't understand who we are, when we don't understand what God says about us and live in that. You know, Abraham got in trouble a few times because he forgot who he was. He, God had told him he would be the father of many nations, right? But when he went down to Egypt and some other places, he became fearful that the men would see his wife and want her enough to murder him. So it caused him to act outside of who God said he was. I mean, if God says you're going to be the father of many nations and you don't have any children yet, chances of you dying are pretty slim, wouldn't you say? I think that's how it is with us, man. If you and I really knew what God thought, where he wanted to take our lives, what he wanted to do with them, I think we make decisions. We live just a little bit differently, you know? So what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is at the very top of the list of the things that I wish I had known when I was in college. Stuff you've heard before. There's nothing new under the sun. But I am hoping that this makes a difference in the lives of some of you here tonight. Let me pray real quick for us before I jump into it. Lord God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the, you are the one who holds all of our times in your hands. You will perfect those things which concern us. I pray that you fill us with your spirit. I pray that you help us to realize that you have not put a spirit of fear in us, but a spirit of love and power and a sound, disciplined mind. Thank you so much for being who you are. In Jesus' name, every man. I mean, amen, not every man. Amen. Popcorn. You can go ahead and put that first picture up there. Yeah. <laughs> Popcorn. What does that have to do with what I want to communicate to you tonight? 
The question is, how does popcorn go from this to, next slide please, to this? I like popcorn. Y'all like popcorn? I love popcorn, man. In my house, <laughs> this is no lie, no exaggeration. We go through stretches where we'll have popcorn five out of seven nights every week. We'll go like two months in a row like that. My family keeps the popcorn industry afloat all by ourselves, man, for real. Um, go back to the first one, please. Popcorn pops and becomes something that we can use because of an explosion of moisture. Every kernel of popcorn has moisture in it. And so when you heat it up, however you heat it up, whether you put it in the microwave, you put it in your stir crazy and you heat the oil or use an air popper or you do it on the stove top, when you heat it up, it heats that moisture. That moisture becomes steam and it starts to rise and it pushes really hard against that shell. As it continues to heat, the steam continues to rise until the shell splits open. And that's that popping sound you hear when you're popping popcorn. What's one, what once was a small little hard object that you couldn't really eat, it, it increases in size. It becomes soft and fluffy, what was on the inside breaks out and it dominates. You can go ahead and thank you. It, and, and it becomes that. And that's what we do with it. That's what we do with it. Now, the thing about popcorn is when you pop it, you can't even hardly find the shell. It's the same. It's popcorn, but it becomes something totally different than it was before. In you and me, when we pray and we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, he puts something down, he deposits something deep down in our soul. He puts part of himself, part of his spirit, down deep inside of us. And that part of him is just waiting to respond to the right environment. It wants to grow and expand. And to those who figure it out, for those who understand what it is they have to do, it continues to grow and grow, just like that moisture, until the new life inside you breaks out. And you become, so you, you walk different, you talk different, you act different. You are different. You're the same person, but you are different. Because you have created an environment by which God will heat that up on the inside. And you become a new person. The old things have passed away. This is the transformation that Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. He says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That's how he does it. That's how you pop. You create an environment where God can come in and change you into a new person because he starts working on your mind. He starts working on the way you think. You know, when, so our thoughts create these feelings and emotions inside of us. And it's those emotions and feelings that drive what we do. It's a recipe for popcorn right there. Human popcorn. No doubt about it. I believe, I believe this. The most important, impactful thing that any person could ever do is to actively, relentlessly, ruthlessly pursue the vision of you that God had in mind when he allowed you to pass through your mother's legs and be born into this world. He had a plan. 
He had thoughts in mind about you before you were born. First John, though, it says that we know that we're of God, but the whole world lies under the control of the e- I'm sorry, the whole world lies under the control of the evil one. So from the moment we are born, we're born into this poisonous, toxic culture, this world that's under the control of the enemy of God. From the second you take your first breath, he is trying to steer you away from who God has called you to be. Keep you away from doing the things that God wants you to do. Now, question is, what's my role in all of this? If God wants to transform me, if he wants to change me, what's my role in it? Or or does he just do it all himself? What's this environment that I got to create? How do I put myself in position to have God's spirit work on me and let that new life that's on the inside become evident on the outside? I believe the blueprint and the answer, some insights, are found in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. If we can go there, go there now. He says this. This is David. Blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf doesn't wither. In all that he does, he prospers. In all he does, he prospers. Can you go back to that one again, please? The very first one, Psalm 1, 1, 3. Yep, there you go. Thank you. So, here's the things that I wish I had known as a young man. We're going to just talk, I'm going to just talk through some key words. We're going to step through this verse real simply. Each one of these has a lot of depth to them, but we aren't going to get real deep. But there are a couple things I want, I want you to see. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. That word blessed simply means happy, fortunate, favored to the point of being envied. So what God is saying to us is this. Your life is to be envied when you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or the counsel of the wicked. The count, you don't, when you don't take the advice of people who are totally disconnected from God and have no regard for his viewpoint on life. The reason that's so hard is because we are surrounded, inundated with media. Remember, the world is under control of the evil one. So a lot of the media that we take in, okay, there's two ways. The enemy affects your mind and your heart. There's two gates, if you will. There's your eyes and there's your ears. When we listen to, when we watch, when we read things, perspectives, opinions that don't line up with how God says our lives should be lived, that's what it means. You're blessed when you don't walk in the advice and the counsel and the ways of people disconnected from God. When you do that, God starts to heat you up. He starts to heat you up. What's inside starts to grow. It says, nor stands in the way of sinners. You are happy and fortunate to be envied when you don't stand in the way of sinners. All that means is that you don't do what they do. You don't live your life that way. You don't live your life that way. And it's a conscious choice. You are happy, fortunate, and to be envied when you don't sit in the seat of scoffers. A scoffer is someone who makes light of serious things. So 
When I was in high school, I joined FCA. And that was the first time I had ever heard that uh, you're not supposed to have sex until you get married, that that was God's standard, right? So when I started trying to live that, and especially when I went to college, dudes would be like, hey, man, so-and-so girl, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'd be like, man, I'm not, I'm not on that, bro. Cats would start to make fun of me. They would start to say, bruh, are you gay? <laughs> I wasn't gay <laughs> by any stretch, but... I just wasn't, I, w I was trying to be this. I was really trying, man. But again, I had a lot of fear. I cared what people thought. So that stance didn't last long for me. But what scoffers do, what scoffers do is they make light of God's standards. Like it's no big deal. So I want you to notice the progression. You walk, stand, Sit. Walk, stand, sit. I think those three bodily positions represent the progression. See, when you listen, when you listen to the opinions and, all, and, and, and the perspectives of people who don't know God, and you start to think about it, the Bible says this, faith comes by hearing. Think about Eve. She walked and talked with God along with her husband in the cool of the day. But when she listened to, she entertained the words of the serpent. It created a different kind of faith in her, a belief in what the serpent was saying rather, rather than what God has said. And that's why it's so important, man. That's why it's so important. We can't, we can't, we can't listen to not if we're trying to maintain a solid, stable walk with God. We cannot entertain and embrace those perspectives. Tough to do in this, tough to do, tough to do in this culture, I know. It says, go ahead, that was good, that's fine. But, <laughs> but he, you can tell we practiced, huh? <laughs> But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So delight. Something, all that means is, I don't, I, I don't know, is anyone here married yet? You're married. So, and did I see another hand go up over here? So do you remember, remember when you met the person you married and y'all started to develop a relationship and all of that? You think about him all the time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, all, that's what that word delight means. All it means is you, you, something you love, you love to think about it. And so this person delights, loves to think about. All during the day, can't wait to get back to God's word. And even during the day, his thoughts drift back towards it. This is a person that has somehow truly fallen in love with God because they think about him a lot. They think about his instructions, his statutes. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. The word meditates, I can't even pronounce the Hebrew word, but it literally means to growl. So, when I first started trying to learn how to meditate and I Googled it or whatever, it, it, it talked, there was a lot of talk about emptying your mind, emptying your mind. I think that might be Eastern meditation, that version, because I believe biblical meditation is you're trying to fill your mind. You're trying to fill your mind. Remember, it's through changing the way we think that God transforms our lives. And so I believe biblical meditation is us repeating, hearing ourselves. That's one way. We just keep repeating it. Like, for instance, there's a proverb, um, life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
So if I wanted to meditate on that, I would be like, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Father, I thank you for letting me understand that life and death is in my tongue. I can speak life. I can speak death. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of my tongue, my tongue. I have the power of life and death with my words. Father, help me with my words to bring life, to speak life to people, to my family, to folks that I meet, to situations. And you just go on like that for a little little while. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't really talk out loud like that, then you mentally chew on it. You chew on it and chew on it until it becomes a part of you. Kind of like your food. You chew on your food and chew on your food until you can swallow it, and then it is of benefit to your body at that point. God created you and me. You remember what he told Adam? or what He, he gave them dominion over the entire earth. God created you and me to have dominion in this life. But first, we have to have dominion over ourselves. We have to master ourselves because the dominion he meant for us to have was meant to be had in partnership with him. Doing it his way, not our way. Go ahead. Keep going. So this is God telling you. Remember I said earlier, we need to understand who we are. God is saying that if you will trust me, if you will meditate on my word a lot, if you will increase your intake of my word, your memorization of it, put more value on it than you currently do. He says, You are like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. His leaf doesn't wither. And all that he does, he prospers. That tree was planted by streams of water. That means it was put there on purpose. We trust God. He plants us by streams of water on purpose. We get everything we need from him. He puts us in a place of abundance spiritually like that. He has unlimited resources and he wants to share them with us. It says it yields its fruit in its season. Yielding fruit means that you are productive. Rhetorical question, you don't have to answer. Have you ever seen a tree that eats its own fruit? No. Fruit is meant for others. So when you start to see that your life is a blessing to others, you're looking to bless other people, uplift other people. You're looking to encourage other people. Man, you know that that new life is rising inside you. You know that it's rising inside you. Now, I will say this. Trees don't yield fruit when they're first planted, do they? It it takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time. Some trees give fruit in the first year. Some trees, like I think avocado trees, they grow for 10 or 20 years before they start to give avocados. They grow a long, it takes a long time. So I think what that means is that some things in you will become fruitful very, very quickly. When you purpose in your heart to give God's word a bigger place, some things are going to take longer. Some things are going to take longer. You can go ahead and go to the next one, to to this picture. So, no, that's not my girlfriend. That's my daughter, (laughs) Sierra. Some of you guys may know her. She's not much older than you guys. She graduated from Mizzou, played basketball at Mizzou. Her and and my older daughter, Bree, both did. Um, One of the things that I've done for a long time. How many of you know what a soap journal is? Does anybody know what a soap journal is? Okay. So I'm going to explain what it is, but since they were little, I've taught them how to keep a soap journal, right? 
And all a soap journal is, it's another way for you to wrestle with and make God's word a part, a big part of your life, to interact with it in a different way. SOAP is an acronym for scripture, uh, observation, application, prayer. Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So you just put those in big letters on the side of a page, S-O-A-P. And in your daily reading, as you're reading, this is how you chew on it. This is how you take God's word and make it into bite-sized chunks so that you can chew on it and digest it. So you put your scripture there. Let's say it's uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Then you write down whatever observations God's spirit brings to mind. It could be one line. Sometimes it will be a paragraph. Then you think through, okay, how can I apply this to my life? How do I make this become part of me? What do I need to do different in light of this word? That's the application. And then the P part is the prayer. You just pray through it, and you ask God to help you stitch that word, that observation, into the DNA of who you are, man. This is, listen, man, in the Old Testament, I want to say it's in Chronicles. It says this, for the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking those whose hearts are completely his so he can show himself strong on their behalf. Getting into the word like this will definitely make a difference in your life, man. I can't tell you. But anyway, the reason I'm showing you Sierra, you can go ahead. So Sunday, this past Sunday, we have a family chat, and she was doing her soap journal. And she got exci became excited. I mean, she, this, is, this is pretty insightful. I'm going to read this with you. But she sent this in the chat. She said, I did my soap journal today on James 125. The one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works, this person will be blessed in what he does. I wanted to share what I wrote because it made me feel light and happy. You'd have to know Sierra to, to get that. But she says, Whenever I see the words law and freedom next to each other, a wave of relief rushes over me. True freedom is found in God's structure, his law. It's freedom of mind, spirit, and soul. The enemy has been so crafty in the ways he uses, it should be uses, uses culture. Go ahead uses culture to make God's way seem binding instead of freeing. We cannot take the bait. In his ways, we are free. In God's ways, we are free. In the world's ways, we are trapped in cycles of greed, lust, impulse, self-loathing, and self-destruction. This is not the path he has called us to. Every day, we must wake up and choose real freedom. It seems counterintuitive to receive freedom by following a law, but doesn't it make sense that the world would find a way to make it sound crazy, impossible, and dreadful? In his laws, we find peace. In peace, we find a freedom that no amount of freeing ourselves to give in to our worldly de desires could ever amount to. Choose freedom today. Love you guys. Sierra. Um, by the way, just so you know, I asked for her permission to share this. She said, don't show a picture. So if you see her around town, don't let her know that I showed her picture up there too. But the point is, the point is simply this, man. Um, We got to become popcorn, like popcorn. We got to pop. You ever wonder why living the Christian life is so hard, especially at this stage of your lives? You have freedom to do whatever the heck you want. Your parents aren't around. 
You make your own choices. And like Paul, you know in your mind what you ought to do, but you don't always do it. It's that cycle that Sierra was talking about. I'm trying to help a couple of my kids right now to escape that cycle, that cycle of doing well for a while. And then, and then it's like this. You get to the top, and then you just kind of fall down, and, and, and then there's, there's this guilt over having fallen. Don't get trapped in that cycle. Don't become consumed with becoming a better person. When Christ forgave us for our sins, the scripture says that God removes our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. That's a long way. It says in other places that when God forgives our sin, he doesn't remember it anymore. So when we fixate on trying to be better people, all it is is sin management. And our sins have been forgiven. The thing that changes us is to purpose in our hearts and minds that we are going to pursue God, that we're going to become who he created us to be. That's how you live a bigger life. You go from being a small, hard-hearted person to something big, fluff, <laughs> a blessing. So my wife would say, I might be getting a little too fluffy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have words right now to tell you. How it, grab hold of this while you're young. Don't wait till you're my age. Not that it's too late. As long as you got breath in your body, it's never too late. Never too late to turn it around, right? But. When you pursue God now, when you start pursuing and trying to be who he wanted you to be, put your feet on a little bit different path. You're going to interact with different people. Different opportunities are going to come your way. Doesn't mean that ridiculous stuff ain't going to happen to you. We live in a broken world, a fallen world. Of course, crazy stuff is going to happen to you sometimes. You're going to fail. You're going to fall. Skin your knee, bump your head, whatever it may be. Get back up. Dust yourself off. Realize that when you repent, God doesn't remember it. So you don't have to carry guilt. And you're free again to get into his word and let your roots go down deep into his word. Y'all, that's what happiness is. That's where life is. No doubt. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. You really Well, let's stand together. <clears throat>
that you would open our eyes, open our eyes to help us to realize that you are the name, you are the one above every name, above every one. You are what all of our hearts long for, whether we know it or not, you are what we want, what we desire, we confess that we chase other things, we live for other things, we think we want other things, we turn to other things, but those things don't just leave us empty. If we're really honest, they don't satisfy us. Nothing satisfies like you, Jesus. We pray, we ask, we plead, we beg. Change our hearts. We can't change our hearts ourselves. We need you. We need the Spirit to be at work, changing our hearts day by day so that we would see the beauty of who you are and that that who you are would would make a transformational difference in our lives and not just in our lives because it's not just about us it's about everybody that you would pull us into your story that we would get to live and be a part of that story that you are telling God help us to want that more and more 
pray that in your name. Amen.